Okay. Um, hello everyone. Um, I am going to talk about uh, Federation of OpenStack Clouds today. Um, so before getting into the topic uh, about uh, myself, I am a solution architect uh, working at Cloud Enablers. Uh, my responsibility is mainly uh, working on uh, the cloud related products and programs uh, in the organization. <coughs> Now, uh, briefly uh, talking about what we are going to discuss today, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, federation a bit. Uh, what is federation and uh, different approaches uh, uh, towards federation. And next we will uh, talk about, uh, there are certain projects uh, that is going on, certain projects and programs in OpenStack that actually is enabling federation. Right, how, how we can achieve uh, a true federation uh, th through various projects uh, in OpenStack itself. Right? And third, we will uh, talk about uh, different use cases, uh, basically the application of uh, federation uh, in the real uh, world. Uh, certain organizations or the companies, they have uh, implemented federation. And third, definitely I will be open to any kind of questions that you might have. Right. So, uh, talking about uh, federation, yeah, different uh, people have uh, different uh, uh, versions or definitions of federation, but uh, I try to put it uh, in a one-liner. So, federation is basically a concept of bringing different uh, providers, service providers uh, uh, across different platforms and the services provided by them uh, for uh, the end users consumption. Um, so. Um, the the uh, from the uh, you know, uh, diagram it is obvious that uh, uh, federation is bringing different cloud service providers uh, uh, together now uh, what exactly uh, federation means to a provider right i mean uh, when you talk about provider uh, definitely the main uh, 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 factor or main uh, thing is uh, pro for provider uh, it can help in scaling up what it means is uh, capacity augmentation, right? In this dynamic world, if there is uh, a need for capacity, definitely uh, in a federated world, a provider can add additional capacity uh, with no time, right? If uh, a provider is under federation. Um, second, uh, there is uh, another uh, way of uh, looking at it. Uh, if there is, let's say, capacity capacity utilization in terms of optimum capacity utilization let's say a provider who is actually not having i mean using utilizing its capacity it doesn't have the customers but at the same region there is another provider who actually um, needs more capacity so uh, the capacity can be additional capacity can be given to the other provider uh, by which actually it will be a optimum cap capacity utilization by both the providers or uh, no, multiple providers. Then second, interoperability. So today uh, I think uh, we have come to a stage where it is not only single resource consumption in cloud terms, right? I mean, uh, we are now talking about from resources to workloads. So it is a combination of resources in terms of forming a workload. Right, so in that case, uh, you know, the customers they are looking at different resources from different providers and combining them together as a workload and actually working on it. So that means we need to have interoperability provided to the end customer. Second, what customer needs is a choice of services or catalog of services. He is not uh, actually uh, you know, looking at only one provider having 10 different offerings. He is actually uh, trying to do a lot of mix and match of services. He want to explore different things, discover new offerings. It is not only need based, but a lot of things are also getting discovered uh, in due course of time by different providers. Right? Now, insight about providers at SLA. Now, how do we choose providers? Definitely, we need to have some insight uh, where we can select which provider is best suitable for me. Right? These are a couple of uh, points uh, towards federation. Now, we will talk about the driving factors. I think we touched upon uh, some of these points in the previous slides. Choice of providers, right? I mean, <coughs> we talked about it. Choice of providers, definitely. How do I choose my providers? So we cannot have, let's say, five or 10 providers listed. And uh, just simply, OK, you select this, I want this provider. But 
because of what? What are the um, attributes of a provider we should look at? Is it the response SLA? It is the resolution SLA? It is uh, the performance, the uptime, uh, or the SLA? I mean, what is that? Or the location? Uh, um, no, um, what exactly the reliability of the provider? So uh, there are various driving factors based on which customer actually is deciding today which provider he should go for. Right, he should deploy his uh, workload uh, in mix and match of services. Uh, definitely, one provider is very good at SaaS. One provider is very good at uh, something else. Uh, maybe the compute. Someone is providing a best performing queuing services. So um, today, uh, the uh, customer is looking at mixing and matching all those services provided by different um, providers and uh, actually um, deploying its workload. Right, going local. So going local uh, actually has uh, two uh, aspects. If you see, right, I mean, why someone would look for localization? So definitely there are two factors today which drives uh, going local. One is uh, definitely uh, the term we call data gravity. Data gravity means where the data resides. So um, if you take an example, right, today, uh, there are a lot of e-commerce platforms evolving every day. So what does it mean is uh, the e-commerce providers, they want to be closer to their <coughs> customers. Uh, if you see, take an example of India or APAC region, there are so many e-commerce providers. So they want uh, to serve their customers from uh, somewhere in India or APAC region, uh, at least in Asia, right? I mean, they, cannot, they are not comfortable in serving their customers. Uh, from uh, somewhere, let's say, a data center uh, in US, right? Uh, the next is the uh, user uh, data gravity. Uh, data gravity is something uh, which, again, uh, is related to this. And I actually I talked about data gravity. I will talk about user gravity. So these are the two factors which are actually deciding where the workload should be, what kind, where actually I should deploy my workloads. Right? Now, heterogeneity of platforms. Now, this is something which is uh, being talked about a lot. Uh, whether it is OpenStack, CloudStack, or any other cloud management platform, or any other virtualization layer. Now, customer would like to experiment and see which is best suitable for uh, his uh, workloads or his needs. So that is why heterogeneity of platform is one of the major driving factors which will actually enable true federation. Ability to scale. We talked about it, so definitely uh, in dynamic uh, environment as of today, we do not know what are our capacity needs. We can forecast only for a quarter or two, but one year down the line, how will be the demand for my workload or uh, the resources I actually, the customer is not uh, able to predict today. Uh, and uh, that is where, but whenever that happens, they want to do it immediately. They should be able to add additional capacity without um, wasting much of time, right? Movement of migration of workloads. When we are providing choice of providers, uh, mix and match of services, what it means is if a customer is not happy with one service provider, how quickly is he getting logged in with one vendor or one service provider? Or he actually can migrate his workloads uh, from one provider to another. If at all he do not Actually, he's not happy with one provider. How easy or difficult it is to move his workload from one provider to another. So these are basically the driving factors which are actually uh, going to uh, accelerate federation. Right Now, different approaches uh, towards federation. Uh, the first approach, uh, what um, we are talking here, is uh, the so-called hybrid cloud approach. So if you uh, we talk from a uh, service provider's point of view, um, suddenly uh, he started with one data center in one region, but slowly he is expanding uh, its foot footprint across the globe and uh, augmenting uh, newer data centers. So what it means is definitely when he, something, uh, some resources has to be provisioned, it cannot be that I should go to each and every um, you know, uh, cloud platform dashboard and I should uh, provision uh, the resources. So uh, there is some kind of a self-service portal which is actually uh, targeted towards um, uh, you know, provisioning uh, and uh, the consolidated uses uh, and metering uh, aspect. 
So th that is why this model uh, came in. I mean, this is, I think, uh, there for the last uh, couple of years. Uh, similarly, uh, looking at the, from the enterprises perspective, if we look at it, um, they first tried to uh, do something in-house or tried uh, experimenting with the public cloud, slowly either migrated into the uh, um, hosted private cloud or on-premise private cloud, or it is vice versa. From a private cloud, they're going to public cloud. So th this is a, uh, one of the approach uh, which actually uh, is uh, uh, bringing federation, but uh, we cannot say this is a true federation uh, in a sense. Uh, we will uh, definitely come to uh, the debate uh, why uh, this might not be uh, the true federation. The second model, if we see, and uh, maybe in the last um, three to four quarters, uh, we see a lot of traction gaining in the second uh, a type of federation, which is marketplace-based federation model, where a user comes to a common marketplace uh, where all the providers, different providers, are actually having real estate in terms of the different service offerings. So users come to marketplace, search, select, compare various services offered by different providers uh, using different attributes, right? I mean, um, uh, as we discussed, it can be SLA, it can be cost, it can be location, it can be geo, uh, it can be anything, right? So uh, when user comes and he selects, again here, he is mixing and matching the services, right? He selects one um, uh, compute or the IS from uh, one uh, provider, a queue from another provider, a load balancer from some other provider. Now, the, the, that is combined and packaged together, and the Cloud Federation engine actually takes care of deploying the different or provisioning different acro uh, uh, resources across providers through this federation engine. So here, if you see the federation engine and the cloud marketplace, they, they are not related to any provider. So they are basically the provider and platform agnostic. So, the, so as, as and when the market is growing, I think a lot many cloud providers will come uh, to this marketplace, join the marketplace. So uh, user definitely, um, uh, user gets all the benefits in terms of comparing different uh, uh, resources. He, uh, he gets the best of available resources according to uh, his need. Now, but it is not only ending with the end user itself. Now, this also provides an avenue for uh, providers as well. Maybe it looks like, uh, you know, providers are getting abstracted, but actually that is not uh, true. See, once a provider comes to marketplace, he gets to see, like, you know, what other providers are offering in terms of the cost, in terms of performance. So this will actually give a healthy, uh, give rise to a healthy competition among providers. And definitely, in in that bargain, right, what is going to happen at the end is this will also leads to a lot of innovation in terms of okay, how how can I optimize my cost? How, how can I uh, provide uh, the lowest compute uh, or cheapest compute or resource, uh, a cloud resource to my end user, right? So this will definitely give rise to a lot of innovation. So that is where the benefits lies for the provider. And of course, they will get a 360 degree view of what others providers are offering in what cost. He should be able to compare uh, himself with other providers in terms of what he needs to do or or he is ahead in the market so it actually uh, uh, this way i mean this is one of the model i mean uh, we have seen uh, the dells and ibms of the worlds i think uh, coming up with uh, this marketplace uh, based uh, federation model uh, in the last uh, year and year uh, half yeah so uh, now i will actually talk about uh, okay these are the uh, two types of federation uh, what are the different projects uh, available uh, or going on, I mean, any projects, ongoing projects in OpenStack, which is actually enabling uh, this kind of federation? So definitely when we talk about federation, first is when I have multiple providers, how do I get into uh, you know, two or three different providers? Do I need to have you no know, individual identity or it is the same identity I can use? Definitely when it comes to the enterprises or end user, 
they cannot have no identities across different um, uh, for different different providers they cannot maintain the um, credentials uh, separately and an enterprise having different different users it again becomes even more complex and that is where uh, in the ice house release um, um, openstack actually uh, uh, enabled uh, identity federation uh, through federated identity using keystone so um, i think all of us know about this so um, now um, keystone actually is acting as a service provider so let's say any enterprise having its own corporate ad or ldap or any other identity provider so they need not to have their footprints in terms of credentials stored in uh, keystone so keystone would be able to take the authorization token and uh, allow the users to consume any services across uh, openstack so this is actually uh, uh, really helped is helping lot of enterprises uh, coming to openstack or any openstack related providers where uh, they need not to again maintain the credentials so this was a um, blocker and uh, uh, since ice house release now this is something which is available now okay uh, we come to openstack now uh, that is good right so uh, this was definitely uh, one of the good uh, thing that happened in the last release but having said that now we are talking about multiple uh, openstack clouds now uh, can it be possible let's say if i am already authenticated within by one keystone uh, will i be able to consume another openstack cloud by any other providers so that again leads to the next um, actually uh, enhancement uh, uh, in uh, um, kilo uh, release which is basically keystone to keystone federation so uh, in keystone to keystone federation what uh, actually is happening is two keystones are acting as identity provider uh, and service provider to each other if a customer of uh, a cloud platform a is already authenticated by the keystone a then keystone for uh, consuming any resources in keystone b he need not to again enter its credentials those same authentication and authorization will be applicable so there is a trust relationship that is getting built uh, between two keystones hence you know uh, it is becoming easy to consume resources across multiple um, cloud platforms so th this this is one of the uh, projects uh, or initiatives uh, from openstack which actually uh, enables uh, identity federation so which is one of the aspect of uh, the federated uh, cloud model now we talked we saw we are able to log in or uh, get authenticated to different cloud platforms now once we get authenticated what we do next all right definitely we have to consume the resources so what does it mean is we have to provision the resources or orchestrate resources across various cloud platforms now uh, how does that happen so in a typical or ideal a uh, federated cloud orchestrated model uh, customer selects uh, mix and match of services as we talked about vm a virtual machine a queuing service uh, or a load balancer for let's say three different providers on top of that customer wants monitoring uh, any kind of management backup or dr service to be available for his workload right so uh, the left hand side boxes what you see is that services that is provided by Uh, the different providers and on top of it uh, in a marketplace uh, model what is happening is a monitoring as a service or um, you know any kind of backup or dr as a service now that is being provided through the marketplace operator itself now all of that being packaged together is actually provisioned again through uh, the federation engine and um, provision across different providers and um, the user get to consume it now th this is one of the model okay this is this is an ideal model but how openstack can help us so uh, openstack uh, the heat project um, which is uh, well known for uh, the orchestration uh, i think a brief uh, history about uh, heat heat initially started to support uh, the aws um, cloud formation template but uh, over the period of time uh, it has evolved uh, as uh, as a robust orchestration engine 
and uh, currently it uh, supports uh, hot template uh, which is known as heat orchestration template so whatever workloads we saw uh, in the previous this thing if that can be templatized uh, as a hot template and the heat orchestration engine what we are showing here is actually it is decoupled it is not tied to any um, specific open stack if heat hot templates can be actually orchestrated across uh, open stack clouds then um, this is possible and this is something which uh, we have already uh, tried uh, in our lab and it is working fine now again the question next question comes if at all I convert all my workload needs or blueprints to hot templates, uh, tomorrow any other specification coming, will there not be any challenges again for migration uh, or movement of my workloads? So, so uh, in that uh, context, uh, I think um, um, one of the thing that is happening now is all the heat templates are becoming Tosca compliant. So Tosca, I think uh, there are uh, different other providers who are also uh, participating in uh, this OSS um, back Tosca compliant model where uh, any template which is Tosca compliant, uh, it's a XML based template that will be supported by heat. So heat can be the orchestration engine across different clouds where the workload can be provisioned across multiple uh, providers. So uh, in this way, uh, I think we should be able to uh, uh, consume the resources across uh, multiple uh, clouds. Yeah. Now, uh, we actually uh, got into the cloud platforms, we consume the resources. Uh, now, the next question that comes to our mind is, OK, uh, both of these is fine. But uh, after this, how do I actually track my uses across different uh, cloud platforms uh, and how do I, uh, we talked about the templates but uh, one of the basic uh, need uh, for templates is definitely if at all I do not have the same golden images uh, uh, available across the clouds, uh, how are you going to provision the resources across clouds. So um, to address uh, these two needs. Uh, it's actually uh, a bit tough, but uh, I think there is a blueprint uh, that's been proposed, um, which is the tricolors or cascading um, open stack. Um, uh, so I have just tried to reuse the same uh, concept here. So uh, if you see in cascading of open stack, it's a very uh, nice concept where uh, what is happening is uh, one parent open stack is exposed to the external world and all the APIs of that. Uh, uh, OpenStack is exposed uh, to the external world and uh, any other um, uh, OpenStack uh, setups are actually uh, called as cascaded OpenStack or it is uh, similar to the concept of um, uh, availability zones, right? different availability zones uh, across for a, a single uh, service providers. Right? So uh, in this case first for <coughs> uniform image management what has been proposed is uh, at any point of time, uh, these are basically three different OpenStack setups out of this one works as the parent OpenStack and two others are the cascaded OpenStack, right? At any point of time, if an image is getting uploaded to one of these providers, uh, then the replica manager uh, there will uh, be responsible for copying that image uh, across uh, other providers. Uh, now this is uh, something which is definitely debatable uh, that uh, no, uh, do we really need to copy the images across OpenStack clouds or is there a, uh, any other mechanism. So for which the second option which is proposed uh, in this blueprint is uh, if we do not want to replicate the images the first, for the first time when a call goes to any of the OpenStack where the image is not available. Uh, for a resource consumption. At that point of time, the image gets copied uh, to uh, the um, target um, OpenStack. Now, which uh, means for the first time when we provision a VM with that specific image, it might be possible that the provisioning time will be a bit uh, more. But um, uh, if let we are worried about the storage cost and others, then definitely this might be another option. 
and uh, of course there uh, will be other options but i think currently th these are the two options that is proposed in this blueprint now second uh, for usage tracking assuming silometer is the uh, uh, metering uh, component so uh, there is a proxy silometer so any point of time if there are any uh, um, queries uh, f for uh, any of the resources that has been provisioned from uh, the other open stack um, um, platforms then what happens is uh, basically everything comes from that silometer proxy which means that uh, the data is getting usage data is getting stored uh, in different uh, platforms and um, uh, when on demand the data gets aggregated and uh, being uh, sent to the user so th th this is one of the way where we can uh, actually have a consolidated metering uh, or um, uses uh, tracking but uh, this is uh, something which is uh, there as a blueprint uh, which has not uh, come to the uh, mainstream uh, project yet uh, yeah so so now uh, we talked about actually these were the three uh, different concepts i wanted to uh, discuss uh, about um, in terms of identity federation federation orchestration uh, and um, the uh, image management and uh, usage um, tracking right now we will actually talk about a couple of uh, marketplaces which are uh, available today so definitely when uh, we talk about uh, marketplaces the first uh, marketplace that uh, comes to mind uh, and maybe we have seen uh, is the aws cloud marketplace now uh, if we come to aws cloud marketplace we can see there are uh, different options available uh, in terms of the softwares in terms of uh, uh, various services um, saas so aws marketplace i think is the was the first marketplace that was introduced with a similar model but having said that um uh, there is a question whether aws marketplace can we really uh, term it as a federated cloud marketplace because it uh, is against the basic concept of heterogeneity of platform and combination of providers so it is the single provider and it is a single platform having said that the market marketplace model is definitely uh, the one but uh, definitely uh, it doesn't give the complete federation where we said no uh, it will be really good to have multiple uh, uh, providers coming under a single uh, platform similarly uh, uh, another marketplace uh, ibm cloud marketplace so uh, at the outset it looks like uh, you no know, different applications a saas uh, based uh, marketplace which is uh, uh, available today and uh, we can see uh, you know choose or pick applications uh, or you know services based on platforms infrastructure type so there are different um, uh, choices that are available uh, to the um, end user now uh, the third i have taken is uh, the compute next global cloud marketplace so uh, if you see here um, uh, in the compute next global cloud marketplace it is uh, currently uh, you see Uh, all the ias providers there are almost 60 plus providers uh, who are uh, available under single platform uh, in 28 different countries and 40 different cities so uh, the, the wide choices on the left hand side i mean if we see we can uh, select the choices i mean uh, uh, the resources based on type os country city or any kind of hardware uh, and so, so there are different options available in this marketplace and um, uh, this actually looks interesting so i have another slide on that uh, when i provision a workload uh, in uh, this marketplace how does it uh, look like so if you see it is again uh, a workload uh, based uh, model so where uh, on the left hand side uh, i have selected um, you know the resources uh, in terms of compute and storage from uh, different uh, uh, providers and on the right hand side what is whatever is been provided is actually by this marketplace operator compute next uh, in terms of uh, console manager uh, which actually is nothing but a, a remote console or uh, a monitoring that can be enabled so that is something which the marketplace operator itself is packaging along with uh, various uh, resources that is uh, been uh, provided uh, by the providers offered by the providers uh, so 
uh, this again uh, is a, a good uh, model uh, seems to be uh, uh, the choice for uh, uh, different uh, options for uh, the end uh, users right uh, uh, i think we talked about uh, marketplaces and open stack cloud platforms right i mean but if you see uh, right today uh, whatever uh, projects uh, i talked about uh, it is actually uh, not only uh, meant for um, OpenStax alone. Let's say if OpenStack as a community, uh, right, if we will only uh, uh, think about uh, you know, a federation of OpenStack clouds, then that doesn't satisfy the basic definition of, again, the federation. So uh, because when someone wants to try OpenStack, he should not have you know, any doubt in his mind that if OpenStack doesn't work, I will invest a lot of uh, money and uh, what is there, will I be able to migrate or move my workload across to any other providers if there is a need. So uh, that is why uh, the projects itself, uh, be it uh, the Keystone, uh, be it the Heat, they are actually not uh, only OpenStack specific. If you see, uh, Keystone can act as identity provider to other cloud platforms as well. If you see the Heat, Heat actually in our cloud lab um, in at Cloud Enablers, we have orchestrated uh, uh, the different resources using Heat template to uh, Amazon and uh, other cloud providers as well. Right? It is not limiting uh, us to only try out certain things uh, only for uh, OpenStack. Right? So uh, that is why the uh, question or uh, the thought I am proposing is uh, we should not restrict the federation, though we started with federation of OpenStack clouds, it should not be limited to only federation of OpenStack clouds. Actually, it can go beyond uh, that, right? So then, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, these are a couple of references. Uh, that's all I had, actually. Uh, any questions, I'll be happy. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. Um. Is it on? Okay. Yeah. I'm All right. Well, um, so the question I had is networking in terms of you've got, let's say you've got two different clouds that you're using for, or two different clouds that you're using for disaster recovery or high availability globalization. Mm -hmm. Is there a common standard we're developing with Neutron? Because OpenStack is the Rosetta Stone of talking different clouds to each other. Yeah. Is there a standard with Neutron to say connect this Neutron network to that Neutron network? Instead of having to, right now, it's just individual providers providing yeah. solutions. But yes. do we have people working on defining the standard to make those connections or to my local? Yeah, uh, that, that's a very good question. If you uh, if we'll go to the cascading of OpenStack, right? I mean, I talked about only Silometer uh, and uh, the uh, Glance. But uh, actually, uh, the same thing is done uh, with the uh, Neutron itself, where, uh, you know, basically, let's say you are provisioning two VMs across two clouds, right? And you want to apply the same subnet. So that is possible. But uh, again, that is something which people are have thought through, but it's not implemented yet. We're, okay, yeah, I just, I just wasn't sure if there was any, any, yeah, any so kind that, of Yeah, so that is there as part yeah. of uh, the cascading, cascading uh, blueprint. Okay. Yeah. All right. So any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry, uh, will you be, uh, could you please use the mic? I mean, that's a requirement from them, otherwise it's not getting recorded. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it is not clear to me in the slide uh, whether he does the orchestration. Right. Who owns that heat? Uh, so it is the marketplace operator. So it is the uh, federation uh, provider. It, it is not uh, owned by any specific uh, cloud platform or service providers. Yeah. Okay, if uh, no more questions, uh, thank you very much and